Welcome to Lamis.com in a lab video series on Cisco SD-WAN 20.9. This is Matha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of SD-WAN videos, you can visit our website under the routing switching section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the policy overview video, we discussed the four types of policies Cisco SD-WAN has, which are the centralized control, centralized data, localized control, and localized data policy. In this video, the first type of policy we are going to look at is localized control policy. Because this is the first configuration video in this video series, let's review our lab diagram. And if you have been watching our SD-WAN 20.8 basic video series, this is exactly where we left things off at the end of that series. So this should look very familiar to you. Now let's go over the lab diagram. At the very top, we have the three Cisco SD-WAN controller, vManage, vBond, and vSmart hosted in our simulated internet on the VLAN 110, and these are their IP addresses, 110, 12, and 13. They have their own site ID of 255. For our test sites, we have three that we are going to be using. Site ID number one, that's our Labminutes headquarter, and this is where we hosting the server resources where we have our domain controller, which is Windows 2019 right here, IP address 172.16.32.40, and that's sitting on VLAN 32, which is our server VLAN. We're gonna be using the server quite a bit from the jump host perspective, as well as uh, testing it as a source, or it could be destination too, in our connectivity testing. Connected to our core switch, switch one, with a path out to the internet via our FTD firewall, firewall number one right here. For an SD-WAN edge device, we have two physical routers, R1 and R2, connected back on the back end to the core switch, switch one. For the remote sites, we have the site ID 101, which is a branch number one or BR1, who also has two physical routers there, BR1-1 and BR1-2. This is a dual router site. We have the T-Log extension connected just because the both routers do not have their own dedicated connection to the two transports that we have connected to our local switch, switch two with the test machine, Win 10 test one. The second remote site, site ID 102, that's our branch number two, right, with the router BR2 over here, which is a Catalyst 8000V connected on the back end to the same switch, switch two, and a local host of Windows 10 test two. And so all of our edge devices are currently connected to the SD-WAN overlay via internet and MPLS. We have a complete connectivity between all the sites in the default full mesh topology with multiple redundant tunnels across both transports. And that's what we have right now. Moving on to the next diagram, this is more of a logical routing diagram here. There are three routing protocols that we are running, which are the BGP, and that's for route advertisement into the MPLS. As you can see, all of the routers, except for the BR11s are participating in BGP protocol. All right, some are peering directly to the MPLS, and the headquarters are peering to a local MPLS router, right, which in turn also peers to the MPLS. We have EIGRP, running at the headquarter between the headquarter routers and its local core switch, switch one, as you can see right there. Right, so all of the server subnets are being advertised from switch one to the routers and vice versa, right from the router will be from OMP into EHRP to switch one. So that's how we have the routing done at the headquarter. We also have OSPF running at branch number one between the router BIA1112 and the local switch, switch two. As you can see right there, with the switch two has a bunch of loopbacks being advertised into OSPF, and that can be reached right now also from the other sites. And so these are where we are going to use the localized control policy to control route learning and advertisement. 